All right, fifth grade. This is going to be a screencast telling you uh, what you guys need to do to get started with your dynamic uh, weather event uh, presentation. So the first thing you're going to do is navigate to the fifth grade page. Uh, I am currently there. You guys can do that through the Country Meadows main website by clicking on fifth grade. So once you're in here, you can click on Tech Tools. And uh, it's an ICT Center project, so you'll click on ICT Center. And inside of here, uh, this video will be linked here when I'm finished, so you guys can always refer back to it. But the uh, instructions are going to be located right here. And what this is going to do is this is going to open up a uh, Google presentation that is going to uh, kind of uh, outline how we go about uh, presenting our information. So the instructions are located here, so let's kind of go through them. So this is the uh, Weather Web Quest project. Uh, the introduction is, you're a team of meteor meteorologists, so you have a, either one or more people in your group, and you guys are going to be working together to uh, describe your dynamic weather event. And we're going to talk about the terms and things that you use to describe that dynamic weather event in uh, just a little bit here. But So you're experts, uh, you're, you're sent out to teach us about catastrophic weather. So your question is, uh, how do different atmospheric conditions result in dynamic weather? So uh, how does the atmosphere change? What's going on with the wind and the pressure and the temperatures? And where are the clouds at? That kind of stuff. So what does it mean? How do the changes in temperature, pressure, humidity, dew point, how do those changes affect the weather? Where are the cloud layers? There are different layers of clouds. You know, the stratosphere, there's... Uh, different kinds of clouds as well, and they'll talk about those uh, depending on what kind of dynamic weather event you're researching. Uh, how high are the clouds? So here's the process. So you guys are, you're meteorologists, you're going to do research, and uh, I'm going to show you where the research portion of this is in just a second. But uh, find out how the pressure changes. When is the pressure high? When is the pressure low? Uh, what are the temperatures? Do I have a uh, a system of high temperatures meeting a system of cool temperatures. So what happens when those those two uh, temperatures mix? What happens? How does that affect the weather? Um, there are different illustrations you can find out on the internet. Uh, that's probably the best way to describe the layers of atmosphere. So right here it says describe the layers of atmosphere in relation to your dynamic weather event. What that means is, okay, where are the clouds? Uh, you know, what are the different layers of clouds and, and what are the winds like at those levels? What's going on? Uh, the last thing here is what kind of instruments do we use to measure uh, the different kinds of, of um, things happening? So if you look back here at the question, it says, Okay, what do we use to measure temperature? What do we use to measure pressure and humidity and dew point? What do we use to measure that stuff? Uh, how do we measure the thickness of clouds, that kind of stuff? So here's the presentation right here. You guys, I think that you guys should really stick to um, Google presentation if you're working in groups because it just caters to the group because you guys can share it with one another and work on it together. Uh, Wixi is an option for you guys in terms of of doing that, but I would highly recommend using Google Presentation because uh, more than one of you can work on it at once at the same time. So uh, actually, you know what? Let's not even use Wixi at all. Go ahead and do a Google Presentation. So let's just stick with the Google Presentation for this project. Uh, under Resources here, uh, this is the old research page and this is the new research pages. We're actually going to eliminate this link here, so only click on the one that says New Research Pages if you happen to be doing it through this presentation. But at this point, I'm going to take you back to the fifth grade page because I also have a research link right here. It says Dynamic Weather Research. So these are the instructions. You can look back at those at any time as well as the video that's current. you're currently watching can be accessed here. It will be blue and have a line under it, so it will be hyperlinked later. So if I click on the Dynamic Weather Research link, we have all sorts of research uh, resources here for you that you can that you can click on and look at. So I think I, I did one on um, tornadoes. Uh, I, I'll never ask you guys to do something that I'm not willing to do myself. So if we click on um, Weather Whiz Kids right here, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Web Weather for Kids, I click on that. It's going to open up and I can uh, research here. Uh, it says thunderstorms and tornadoes. So I can click on that and uh, there's all kinds of information on here that you can go through and research to answer the questions 
uh, you know, what's going on with uh, the temperature and the pressure and, and that kind of thing. So let me hop back into my Google Drive. I actually did do, do an example for you guys. So let me open up my presentation that I did. So here's one that I did on tornadoes. And Mrs. Carson can help you guys with pulling pictures into these. If you already know how to do it, that's great. But what you do is you're going to create a new presentation, and I'll show you guys that in just a second. Actually, Mrs. Carson can show you how to do how to create a presentation. But uh, in this is uh, an example of of tornadoes. Let me see if I can actually uh, get this thing going. So view start presentation. All right, so here's one I did on tornadoes. Uh, you know, I said it is a dynamic weather event. So what kind of conditions do you need to have a tornado? So I said, well. You need some moist air. You do need high humidity. Uh, you need warm air from someplace. So you're going to have to have some warm air meeting some cold air, I guess. Uh, you do need some dry air as well. So you need an area of high humidity, an area of low humidity, an area of warm air, and an area of cool air to be mixing together. And that creates very unstable atmospheric conditions. Um, it actually tells you where you need them. So I need those low levels of moisture to be near the ground, and I need, oh, getting, I need, okay, hold on, hold on, get there. I'm going to use this guy. All right, so you need the moist air and the low, you need the moist air from up high and the, and the unmoist air down low to mix near the ground. Uh, the moist air needs to be lifted up um, either by wind or by a cold front. And what ends up happening is the high winds, um, you need to have high winds at all levels. So when you have that moist air rising and it gets windy, those are some of the conditions that you need. And it needs to create kind of a spinning effect. And I think that it talks about, okay, fantastic. It talks about how that funnel cloud forms. So um, when the warm, moist air mixes with the cold, dry air, it creates a very unstable atmosphere or air condition. Okay, and then what happens is is the wind direction changes. The wind speed creates a horizontal spinning effect. Uh, it kind of it's a little bit hard to describe. I, I don't. I think I might have a picture on the other page though. But the rising air changes this horizontal spinning uh, cloud into a vertical spinning cloud. So if you think about it this way, the funnel cloud that you see is actually sideways, and then it kind of gets stood up, kind of like if you were. You ever seen a pole vaulter running and then he puts the pole vault, uh, puts the pole into the ground and then he goes up really high and goes over the bar? The pole is kind of like the cloud. The, pole, the, the cloud stands up and becomes a spinning tornado. Uh, the temperature requirements, it actually, you don't have to have um, a high or a low temperature. You can have tornadoes form very cold weather and in very warm weather. Tornadoes can occur, and this is where we talked about the layers, the cloud layers. Tornadoes can occur anywhere from 0 to 60,000 feet uh, uh, in the atmosphere. The funnel cloud actually uh, is pretty low. It, depending on the size of the tornado, it can be really tall or it can be, you know, like 10,000 feet to the ground. could just be the funnel cloud portion of that. But uh, there's a lot of good pictures on the Internet for those of you doing a tornado that kind of describe where the funnel cloud starts and ends in different kinds of tornadoes. Uh, these are the uh, instruments that are used to measure tornadoes. So a thermometer you're all probably familiar with is used to measure uh, temperature. A barometer measures pressure. So if you've ever watched the weather, um, it's actually measured in inches. Uh, low pressure is usually anything below like 29 and a half inches. High pressure is usually above 29 and a half inches, so about 30. But radar is used to measure, you ever seen the Doppler radar on TV? That's used to measure the density of clouds. Um, turtles are something that were invented. They're like small uh, little flying, uh, I guess like little flying like domes or balls that fly up. They actually release them into a tornado or around a tornado and they fly around and they measure uh, wind speed and direction and humidity and temperature and they radio that back to a sensor uh, or an antenna somewhere. The EF scale, this is a scale that they use to uh, measure the intensity or size of a tornado. So 
Um, if you ever heard of an F5 tornado or an F4 tornado, that's what they're talking about. They're talking about the Fujita tornado intensity scale. Uh, so those, I, I did touch on the instruments that were used. So let's go back through here so that you guys can actually see. So I talked about high and low pressure systems. I talked about high and low temperatures. I talked about the layers of clouds um, and funnel clouds and, and such dealing with the tornado. And I also talked about um, the instruments that were used to measure that tornado. So this is basically uh, what you guys like what would like you guys to do. And um, let's take a look at that research page again real fast if I could. Let me get back on here. So here's our research. So that was just an example for tornadoes, but there's also floods, hurricanes, and thunderstorms, and there's all sorts of research that you guys could do here. So this is just uh, hopefully a video that uh, either Mrs. Carson can watch and help you guys out, or you guys can come back and refer directly to this. Thanks for watching.